Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's The Q, covering Red Hat Summit 2017, brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome to the session wrap of the Red Hat Summit. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman, wrapping up three great days of open source talk. Where are we, Stu? What, tell us the state of Red Hat, the state of open source, what have we learned? You mean beyond, we're in the seaport district of Boston, <laughs> Massachusetts. Uh, you know, we're or a couple blocks away from the, the new Open cities. Innovation Lab uh, okay, com coming from Red Hat. So, Rebecca, it's been a lot of fun with you uh, the, these last I couple of the days. Uh, did over 30 interviews, uh, you know, executives from Jim Whitehurst, uh, you know, on down to many of the, 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 the product teams, many people participating greatly in, in open source, uh, Open Innovation Award winners, uh, the, the Women uh, of Open Source uh, Award winners, uh, Open Innovation Lab participants, a uh, lot of topics, but you know, okay, Red Hat itself, um, you know, I've worked with Red Hat, you know, in various roles in my career uh, for, you know, quite a long time. We didn't talk a lot about Linux this week. Stu, 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 I got to stop you, Linux, is containers, containers is Linux, so you, we're hearing so much about containers, it's the same diff. Yeah, uh, well, you know, I got the t-shirt, Linux is containers, containers are Linux. However, uh, you know, if I, if I even look at Red Hat's messaging, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is like the first platform what they build around, um, and it's a little surprising that they didn't, you know, at least in the conversation we had, it was very much about some of the newer things uh, Coming into the show, I said, what's the progress that they've made around some of the cloud offerings, some of the management offerings, uh, Ansible re weaving its way into a lot of the products, OpenShift really maturing and expanding the portfolio with things like the OpenShift IO uh, to, to be able to really help with, help with application modernization. Uh, middleware progressing, even heard a little bit of a future where they're doing things like serverless. So uh, Red Hat's making good progress. We love when we do these shows multiple years is, they talk about it, do they deliver on it, and uh, you know, we had a couple of guests talked about, there's a little bit more transparency in open source and being part of all of these communities, you have some visibility as to where you're going, doesn't mean that things don't slip every now and again and not every piece makes it into the, the, the product lease that they're expecting, but, uh, they've made great progress. Uh, you know, Linux still, you know, is just a mainstay. It's a piece of lots of uh, environments. The ecosystem reminds me of it's, it's some way that I talk about OpenStack, which we'll go into next week. We had a great session uh, with Radesh, uh, you know, towards the end here, talking about OpenStack. In many ways, it's like that. It's it's weaving its way into lots of infrastructure pieces. Uh, some we'll dig into more this week, but let, let's focus on this week for now. Yeah. Right. So, so you said we didn't talk a lot about Linux. Um, I set you straight there, but um, <laughs> but. What what else did we, what did you, what did you not hear? What are, what do you remain skeptical of? I've, as you said, Red Hat seems to be going from strength to strength. Um, it had 2.4 billion in revenue yeah. this, this year. Yeah, it did for 2016, 2.4 billion in revenue and three billion in bookings. Right. And uh, there, there was, uh, I read, read a financial report that Jim Whitehurst said, goal of the company is five billion within five years. And you look at it and say, okay, from 2.4 to five, well, you know, yeah. actually if it was three billion in bookings, and I think back to three years ago when we first started, it was around two billion dollars, that was almost a 50% growth rate in three years. So if three years from now we do 50% growth rate, we're going to three to 4.5. Of course, the math's not linear, there's scaling of the company, there's lots of products in here, but they've got a big TAM. Um, Ambitious but achievable. Ambitious but achievable. The, the question we've had for a bunch of years is when I look at the cloud, public cloud is affecting a lot of the traditional infrastructure companies. Red Hat is a software company, they're an open source company. Uh, we heard the cloud messaging. Microsoft and Google up on stage, Andy Jassy on video. That was a big question coming in. What about Amazon? How close will Red Hat do? Amazon actually has their own AMI for Linux, which means I can get a package for Linux from Amazon. Not only that, I could take that package outside of Amazon and put it in the data center so I could use the same type of Linux for AWS to work with Red Hat to take Redshift, make what's deeper integration in the public cloud with a AWS, and if I put that on premises, I'm going to have access to the AWS services uh, so that, that tighter application integration for uh, what, what, what they're laying out, really the open hybrid cloud, 
Red Hat terminology, we'll see if other people take that up, but really it's a multi-cloud world, and Red Hat has a good position to live in lots of those environments and provide it really helps solutionize and give uh, really that uh, you know, almost adult supervision that the enterprise wants for all of these uh, open packages. So uh, I, I was heartened to see uh, the progress made, strong ecosystem, as always, you know, passionate you know, customers, developers, uh, and really just heartwarming stories of you know, making the world a better place. Right, what, what was I, your take I, on, on those pieces? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, th those and those are really what you come away remembering. It is the story of a woman saving a man's life in a park in Singapore. Uh, it is the story of an emergency room doing be doing a better job of of serving its patients. It is. Um, it is scaling up technology use in the developing world. I mean, yeah. these are this is what you come yeah. away with, and you say that is open source. Maybe next year that apple you get at the grocery store <laughs> won't have been sitting there 18 months. Well, maybe. <laughs> We're going to code climate. It's, it's Boston's going to be beautiful year round. Um, no, but so I I really do agree, and, and that is I think. Um, what Red Hat did so so brilliantly at this summit is really showcasing the ways in which this technology is having an impact at transforming uh, industries, obviously helping businesses make more money, but also really uh, doing a lot of good. Yeah, absolutely. And Rebecca, I want a big shout out to, to the community here. This is a community show. Red Hat is a great participant of the community. Uh, as we talked to Jim Whitehurst, it's, they want to help you know, raise up the community. It's not about Red Hat leadership. We don't hear number one at a show like this. We hear um, where they're participating, when, and they, when they get involved, they, they, they go deep. We heard about open power, how excited they are that Red Hat, you know, getting involved and in, in, in working in some of these pieces. So, you know, we could not be here without Red Hat support. Uh, it's our fourth year doing this show. We, we had, a, had a blast with it. Uh, we see Red Hat at a lot of shows. Uh, they bring us great customers, their ecosystem partners, uh, and, and their executives, and it, it's been a pleasure to cover it. Yeah, no, I, I, could, I couldn't agree more, and I do think, just in terms of what you were talking about, the, the humility of the Red Hat folks is that they, they aren't going around banging drums of we're number one in this and number one in that, and you sort of think, okay, blah, blah. No, they don't at all. They really are saying, no, we're about making our partners and our customers shine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know what you know what's going to happen with the future of jobs. You know where are people going to work? Uh, you How know these will days they in the work? future. What kind of processes will I mean, they we're work? We're all said. Right. You know that it, you know it's it, it very much a global ecosystem here. We've got to interview you know quite a few international guests here and hear how technology spreading, how people are interacting, how innovation happens in a global environment. I'm sure it ties back to a lot of the things that, that you write about. No, absolutely, yeah. and I think that that is, I mean, Radesh, some of his words of wisdom was, technology is the easy part. Yeah. What we need to be fundamentally rethinking is how we write these applications, how we develop these applications, how we design them, and how we deliver them. And, and also really bearing in mind the end user. And, and that is, I think, also what we, what we learned in also a lot of our other sessions, is really thinking about that. We heard from another person, you know, your competitor is maybe not necessarily the competitor you're thinking of. It's the last app you opened or the last application that that company was using. Mm. And what is stick, what is drawing them toward that application or that technology or that infrastructure and not yours? Right. And so it's really thinking much more broadly about, um, about technology and, and who you're competing with and, and who and how you're working. Yeah, that, that was it was a bank, I love that. They mm. were like, we're not competing against other banks, it's right, where's that, that other att attention span that right. you have? Where are your eyeballs? Uh, we, we, we know, I, I, one of my favorite lines is, uh, you, know, you know what you, Michelangelo, and Einstein have in common? You only have 24 hours in a day, so you need to make sure you take advantage of that. Uh, that's the kind that's of depressing. thing that when you Stu, leverage, know. you know, the community. Uh, I, I, I thought it's inspiring. Mm, okay. Is you know, if we can do great things, okay. we, you know, if we work together uh, <laughs> and, and do that. So it, we're always like, oh, I'm too busy, or I don't have time. It's like you know, hogwash. Right. Uh, you know, that, that that's not the case. Um, I'm no, I'm inspired and fired up uh, after all the conversations we had, uh, especially some of these just you know, great users here, uh, and you know, look. At forward to the next one. You're looking forward to the next one. You're looking forward to OpenStack coming yeah. up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So so right. We, you know, Rebecca. Uh, you know, next week uh, we're both going to be on the cube, but in two different locales. Uh, our team is in the midst of you know the the sprint that is the spring tour. Uh, so we had the Micron event, and we're here next week. Uh, our team is at ServiceNow Knowledge. We're also at Dell EMC World in Vegas. We're at OpenStack Summit. 
back in Boston. Uh, we've got uh, some of our teams going to Microsoft Build, uh, and I'm sure we'll have analyst reports followed from there. Boy, do we have, we have more shows than I could mention through the rest of May and June and beyond. Check out siliconangle.tv to catch all of them. Uh, you know, Rebecca, I'm going to let you do the close, but I have to say big thanks to our team here yes. and remote, yes. Leonard, Chuck, Alex, Ava. We uh, love you all. Jeff and the team uh, back there, uh, you know, pulling off. We were doing some cool things, playing with Facebook Live as part of this event. Uh, we always love, uh, you know, pl playing around with some of the new technologies, finding more ways that we can help reach you. We always appreciate your feedback. And Rebecca, take us on home. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Cube Red Hat Summit, Boston, Massachusetts. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. Thanks so much.